thank you very much for the introduction. Um, once again, my name is Vadim Ruschetnik. I'm from uh, Paderborn University um, in Germany. I work uh, in the Institute of Applied Mechanics and uh, together with the collaboration with the Direct Manufacturing Research Center, we were able to, um, uh, to make this study and um, I want to give you a short uh, brief lecture about the fatigue rate flow behavior and mechanical properties of additive processed aluminum alloy 775. Um, first of all, I want to show you a short overview about my presentation. I will start with uh, the laser melting process. Um, we manufacture with this process uh, the samples and uh, we investigate on this, uh, samples the mechanical and fraction mechanical uh, Performance and uh, followed by the analysis of this additive manufactured uh, aluminum alloy. And uh, I will finish my presentation uh, with the major topics uh, of uh, yeah, what, what we find out. Uh, on this slide, uh, you can see how the idea is put into the practice. At first, we created a uh, 3D model and CAD uh, model and uh, give it to the data preparation software. And uh, here in the data preparation software, we fixed all the parameters uh, which we need for the uh, laser melting process. Uh, we create some support structures which are necessary, and uh, we generate layers out of this model. Then we give all this data to the uh, manufacturing system, and um, here are the three major steps of uh, the manufacturing process. And I want uh, to go more into the detail of these three steps. Here we see the first step, the recoating or coating uh, step. Here um, we deposit uh, with, with the coating unit uh, the first uh, or the uh, metallic powder layer, and um, the um, yeah. Uh, after uh, after we put one layer, um, we use uh, the laser beam for the irradiation and. Um, we use the laser energy to uh, irradiate these regions uh, uh, from the CRD model and um, after that we uh, yeah, melt it uh, locally here, every part of our CRD uh, model will go to the last step, to the lowering process. Uh, here we uh, lower the uh, whole building chamber with uh, the whole powder and um, with these three steps, uh, recoating, irradiation and lowering, uh, we build our part layer by layer. Um, before we start our um, investigation, we need the powder to manufacture um, the specimens and uh, we ask our deliverer that uh, they give us uh, 70, uh, 75 powder and make uh, some analysis of this powder. Here you can see the uh, particle size, particle, um, uh, particle shape and uh, particle size distribution. You can see um, here spherical um, particles as well as uh, elongated particles. And if you if we look at the shape of these particles, some particles have uh, uh, adhesions and um, with an irregular form. If we look at the particle size distribution, we can see here um, that we have the average uh, value of the particle size by uh, 42 microns. This is the reason why we choose the layer thickness of 50 microns for the manufacturing process. Uh, to in investigate the fracture mechanical properties, we choose a compact tension specimen according to the ASD norm, uh, which is shown here with uh, these parameters. For the um, tensile tests, we choose uh, these specimens according to the D norm, and um, yeah, with these uh, values shown here, and uh, to check how the building uh, direction influence our mechanical properties or material properties. Uh, we choose two different uh, build directions, shown here on the right side. Um, here, here on the top you can uh, see uh, a sample with the building direction parallel to the crack row direction and um, parallel to the loading direction. And uh, on the bottom you can see uh, the specimens with the building direction normal or perpendicular to the uh, Break and grow uh, and the loading direction of these specimens. This uh, lines should suggest uh, the layers, and uh, here you can see the building direction. Um, so before we start our, um, uh, to check our mechanical properties, 
uh, we choose uh, additional uh, condition, we choose a heat treatment condition, and for that um, we uh, choose 180 degrees for one, uh, one half hour uh, solution in the light and uh, followed by rapid quenching and finish this process with, uh, the, uh, with the aging process for, uh, at 170 degrees for six hours. Um, here in this table we can see um, the results of uh, the monotonic mechanical properties uh, of the samples uh, for both, both conditions as built uh, means that uh, we have here uh, the part, how it's come from the machine and the heat treatment condition is uh, uh, this, this condition which I uh, explained and uh, we compare it to the literature values uh, for a heat treatment condition T, uh, T6 by 1 um, we look at from, uh, from the beam. If we look at the elongation at the brain, we see here in uh, our new process material uh, really bright behavior compared to the uh, conventional process material. And uh, if we look at the ultimate data strengths, um, we can see there is a big difference between uh, these two building directions. So, and uh, if we compare the values, uh, we can see that uh, specimens with uh, which have a low direction perpendicular to the build direction means uh, this direction uh, they have a factor of five lower uh, ultimate tensile strengths and uh, if we compare these values with the heat treatment uh, values we see here is uh, nearly no difference so it means that uh, the heat treatment has you know, uh, effect on the uh, yeah, monotonic mechanical properties and uh, if we compare uh, the uh, this um, this sample with uh, low direction parallel to the build direction, uh, we can see here that we have here much lower uh, ultimate tensile strengths of factor 2.7. And um, to sum it up, uh, we see here an anisotropical behavior, we see a lower tensile strengths, and uh, we see a really bright behavior. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, fracture mechanical um, performance. Uh, for this, we uh, measured crack uh, row curves. And uh, here we compare it to, uh, to literature curves, and we can see here also um, that this is built curve for the sample which is manufactured parallel with crack row direction parallel to the building direction. Uh, we can see that the threshold value is lower um, in, than the uh, literature values, and um, we see that the whole curve is shifted to the left side, so uh, we lose uh, the crack row performance uh, in this condition. What happened if we look at the heat treated condition? So we see um, there was no optimization uh, through this heat treatment. Um, we have uh, a lower threshold value and uh, we have a higher deviation of uh, these curves. So uh, let's check the break uh, bar. <coughs> so if we look at the break bar, um, we can see that uh, for uh, mode one loading condition, uh, we have the typical. Uh, typical crack pass without uh, any uh, deflections and uh, how does it look like at, uh, at samples with a uh, crack band perpendicular to the build direction um, yeah we can see here it was uh, the sample not possible to initiate the crack by uh, cycle loading it uh, failed at the uh, forced transmission point and uh, because of this reason uh, we uh, Machined, uh, we make the crack longer to the 22 millimeters to make the crack more dangerous. Um, and what happened? We see here that the specimens failed according to the strengths we did. And uh, we see here the same results. We have here really anisotropical behavior related to the building. <coughs> um, to find a reason for this um, mechanical, low mechanical performance, um, we manufactured uh, additional specimens, we manufactured cubes uh, with uh, uh, one cubic centimeter cube and um, we, make, uh, we use optical micrographs to look uh, at, at the surface and we polish them and etch and what we can see here are the so-called up-shaped lines, you can see them here, uh, resulting from an equally shaped uh, metal pool during the manufacturing process. And if we look at other regions uh, in, our, um, in our part, so we find there are certification breaks. Um, and we think um, there are the result of the uh, 
high drag sensitivity of this aluminum core. <laughs> so uh, we look, we zoom it out, look at the whole uh, specimen. So what we can see, um, we see here lots of cracks everywhere. Uh, there seems to be a regular, and uh, they are orientated in the build direction. And um, we think the reason for that is uh, the relatively large range of the certification temperature of this aluminum alloy. And uh, this crack uh, seems to be the reason for the weak mechanical and fracture mechanical uh, properties and for the anisotropical behavior of this material. And at this point, we, find, uh, we must find uh, measures for prevention of, um, of this crack. Uh, let's have a look on the uh, scanning electron microscopy images um, of the fracture surface after the tensile testing. So we see here for this specimen with a uh, low direction parallel to the build direction. Um, we see here regions where we uh, find non melted particles. And uh, we see here regions with limbless uh, features. So um, this suggests uh, us uh, really ductile uh, fracture. And if you look at the uh, other um, at the other uh, at the other direction, we can see very smooth surface, and uh, we think it's uh, we have here gradual uh, 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 through the grains and uh, uh, a transgranular brighten fracture at this point. And uh, let me sum up uh, this results. We see that gas atomized powder from aluminum alloy 7075 can be used to manufacture complex structures by selective laser melting. But under the presented conditions, additive equipment structures um, cannot be used for high performance application due to the low mechanical and fracture mechanical um, properties compared to the conventional process material. And uh, the experiment that shows show us um, unstructural behavior related to the building direction. And the reason for this low mechanical and uh, fracture mechanical properties can be found by process induced uh, initial breaks parallel to the building direction. So we must uh, find a solution to, uh, yeah, to prevent these cracks, maybe by uh, some uh, additional post treatments or uh, by using other process parameters for the 70 75 and all to improve the mechanical performance. At this point, I will thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Feel free to ask. Thank you much.